people have bad ideas about race. Why would it matter that you can tell them apart visually and so on? Uh, so there's that kind of revisionism that goes. On this account, it's much more, look, there are many conceptions of race. Uh, some of them may be real. It's kind of like pluralism there. But at least one of those conceptions is biologically real. Um, and the second departure, uh, the, the second, I think, important attractive feature of this view is, although it holds that there is at least one conception of race that's biological or biologically real, and perhaps it corresponds to one structure of human genetic diversity, it doesn't, you know, the view assumes nothing further, okay? So it's perfectly possible as a matter of empirical fact that these biological races, you know, don't explain anything else. Maybe they do, maybe they don't, right? So the fact that they're real has nothing to do with them being uh, robustly explanatory of a whole host of different phenomena, right? So it's possible for all we know that there are biological races and then all they are is just one uh, um, um, uh, kind of structure to human, to human diversity and then they don't do anything else. But it's also possible that once the scientists get going, it ends up being explanatory in you know, medical genetics and all kinds of other contexts. But that's not built into, into the view. So an important, we've already mentioned these kinds of clustering studies, source of evidence for the claim, at, at least this one conception could be biological, is these kinds of clustering studies, you know, the landmark and a very pop, uh, influential one is by Rosenberg and colleagues, but many subsequent ones have been done. Now clustering uh, programs are very powerful. They can distinguish, uh, uh, they can find, for instance, genetic structure in quite stratified or admixed populations and so on. But the idea here is without pre, you know, if you take, so what they did is take about 52 populations, about a sample of a thousand people, and then feed the genomic data to the cluster. Can it produce clusters? Um, and are those clusters something that are interesting? I mean, can we learn something interesting about you know, the structure of human genetic diversity? Um, and there are kind of very important findings there that are, uh, uh, you know, that may or may not be relevant uh, to uh, an understanding of, of biological races. You know, people are relatively uh, population are at least boring in this one sense that a lot of uh, kind of polymorphisms in people are between individuals, and there are very few region specific alleles, and a lot of genetic uh, 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 what you might call genetic data or information that these clusterings produce is kind of consistent with a sort of nested. Uh, model where all you're doing is just smaller and smaller samples of a much larger nested set. Um, so there are almost, you know, half of all region specific alleles of the few there are, for instance, are in Africa. And you actually will see any pairwise comparisons between individuals from Africa will show more uh, 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 genetic diversity than any pairwise comparisons elsewhere. So it's a kind of what you're seeing is smaller and smaller samplings out of Africa. And this is consistent with broadly what we understand about human origins, um, the sort of out of Africa hypothesis. So there's an overall similarity of human populations. Uh, alleles are widespread. Most differences are kind of pairwise differences uh, between individuals. And for any kind of like region specific alleles, only a very small percentage of them We'll have it in this, uh, we'll have it, okay? Uh, so there are really no common region-specific alleles and uh, many individuals, of course, there's also clinal clusters. Many individuals can be assigned to different clusters. But of course, it would be nice. I mean, if we want biological races, the science of the study of populations and genetics. So then a kind of natural thought is they could potentially be genetic clusters. So this raises the question of whether races are, uh, you know, constitute one of those genetic traits, or if there is among our many, many, many conceptions of race theories of race one that that is uh, a genetic cluster. Well, 
although they don't call them races, Rosenberg and colleagues, of, of course, know there is an interesting result of structure at when uh, K is five, which is that roughly these are going to be populations that are clustering around uh, uh, these large continental groupings. And uh, Spencer has at least uh, argued that these clusters are identical to the US OMB's racial classification scheme. Uh, you know, that scheme is changing, but at least the 97 one that's still um, extant. So then you can say there is therefore at least one theory of race, okay, the OMB theory of race that is identical to one structure of human genetic diversity. Um, there are others that won't be, right? That's fine. It's, it's consistent with the kind of pluralism about, about, about races. So then the question is going to be, how should we approach uh, these biological races? You know, in philosophy of science, we like the things that are natural, that are genuine, that are well-formed, et cetera, right? That is the gold, scientifically elite, that is the gold star, um, because we want to make sure that if there's going to be scientific laws that involve them, claims about causation that involve them, uh, claims about, for instance, similarity between worlds, for David Lewis, naturalness is really important if you're gonna talk about what makes one world, one set of facts about the world similar to another. Well, it has to be facts about the natural properties. And that's because kinds and properties uh, entities are extremely easy to generate, right? Since quine, we are, you know, you can be an abundantist about properties or kinds. There is the kind, people attending the Sowerby workshop on uh, ethnicity and race in medicine, right? Uh, uh, it's going to be, you know, that, that's fine. But obviously, that's a kind of, it's a very, it's a, it's a bad kind in many ways. Uh, although, of course, it has some potency, right? Wow, this, this, this kind, there's a lot of philosophers, from, like statistically, uh, so statistically, very anomalous number of philosophers. So there are things true about this kind of thing that explains, wow, it's um, economically, uh, uh, goods are denominated in pounds around this kind or something like that. You know, it's like, uh, maybe I think it's trivial, but it's it's true. So there are things true about it, but we don't like, we don't, we don't like this abundance, right? For science, we want to leave properties. So then we can think of genuineness, naturalness, scientific eliteness. I am using these terms interchangeably, even though there are, uh, you, you can issue arrest warrants at the end. Obviously there are going to be different accounts of, of, of each. So Hardiman at least says, Look, we're being minimalist, right? We're not saying anything Baroque. We're just saying that these are biological because a lot of what we are taking to be the saliently racial is biologically determined, right? People have skin color. This is a biological phenomena. And also plausibly what he calls ratiation, seeing life an evolutionary process, right? That's the gold star science in biology is evolutionary theory. If something makes sense of it and makes sense in light of it, you're kind of, you're, you're in that culture. And ratiation, for instance, the distribution of skin color is one of those. I mean, there are very few things, as I'll mention, where we can find clear evidence of kind of selection sweeps, like skin color is one of them. So, you know, that's all, right? It's it's a minimalist notion. It's not making any kind of extravagant claims. That's that's all there is. Spencer also, again, very humble, non-Baroque view, right? To say that it's biologically real is just to say it's epistemically useful and justified entity in a well-ordered research program, you know, uh, um, and it, it, it's, it's just going to have the same status as other kinds of biologically genuine kinds. You know, a, a hypothalamus, TUR, TYRP1 gene, monophyletic group, etc. Right. In biology, you know, it's not like, for instance, in physics, where these kinds of notions of perfect naturalness, you know, it's like, oh, the only natural or genuine kinds are those kind of like maximally irreducible, um, you know, things or whatever, like quarks. That's perfectly natural. Everything else is just kind of pretending, you know what I mean? We're not, you know, it's a, we're giving we're giving it a, a, a B minus at best. But in biology, you know, 
we, we don't have to be that Baroque, and there are many of these kinds of groups. But nonetheless, there is an appeal to a notion that we have to distinguish between a certain kind of pathology and a certain kind of genuineness. And race, race seems more like on this view, right? Mollophyletic group or TORP1 gene, then it like baronin or germule or uh, destructive muscle organ. I'm really sad about destructive muscle organ. That would have been that would have been a helpful one if that was. So then we, re, you know, scientists clearly will reject the pathological kinds, but not you know these kinds. So that's all we're saying. We're not saying anything kind of like super super expansive. So the only metaphysical fact then that follows from this being genuine is that it is real enough to use in ongoing research. So that's why I'm engaging in the lumping. I apologize for with Spencer when you were away, the Spencer uh, equation. So I'm just lumping it as and saying that it's minimalist in this sense. The, the count is not grounded in the claim that there's like all these things that race explains, even though it could, right? But that's a scientific question. Uh, rather, by fulfilling these kinds of conditions, minimal conditions of realness, genuineness, it could play an explanatory role. Um, so then, you know, that's the kind of direction of travel. We now know that it's metaphysically possible for some races to matter in medical genetics because some races are biologically real, right? So race is biologically real and therefore, right, it is metaphysically possible that race matters in medical genetics. It's kind of, it's real enough. It's not a pathological kind. It's not destructiveness organ or, you know, germule or whatever. It's like TORP1 gene, okay? So this is rough and ready sketch of the kind of like minimalist, realist claim. There are many conceptions of race. At least one of them is biological. And all it means to say that it's biological is that it kind of, you know, that these were Hardiman, it's, it's making reference to biological phenomena. It explains and it's explained by biological phenomena, like evolutionary theory, ratiation, so looks and sounds like, and it is a kind of biological process. Uh, and in, in, in Spencer's case, it's just to say it's not a pathological kind, it, it's epistemically useful, it's kind of well-formed in this way, uh, and indeed for both Hardiman and Spencer, it, it does correspond, right? We're not starting from nothing, it does correspond to at least one structure of human genetic diversity. If you use powerful clustering algorithms, it will identify, you know, the minimalist races for Hardiman or OMB races for Spencer, it'll identify these as um, as one of the structures of human genetic diversity. So what is my objection to it? So my objection is, as I mentioned, a very high churchy metaphysical objection to it. Uh, uh, and I, I just call this the gerrymandering objection. So gerrymandering objections broadly, you know, for those of you familiar with the kind of naturalist literature, it's just the view that proposed entities, kinds, or properties, which again, I, um, uh, without Warren, I'm just, I'm just going to treat similarly important differences between them, I'm just uh, taking them as the same for my purposes. Uh, so then they're not natural or they're not genuine because they are inappropriately built up. There are many ways for properties or kinds to lack naturalness. They can be pathological, right? Like uh, logistin or destructiveness or there's just nothing in the world that's a phlogiston. There's nothing in the world that's a, a destructiveness organ. But there is actually another way for kinds or properties uh, to be, to lack naturalness, even in a, if it, I have a graded notion, to be lower on the grade of naturalness, and that's for them to be gerrymandered. An important fact uh, about, and, and I wanna argue that this kind of minimal criteria that we have from the minimalist realists is not sufficient to block this objection. It is sufficient to block the objection that these are pathological kinds, uh, or it is also sufficient to block the view that biological race, you know, somehow has to be an essentialist or robustly explanatory notion, but it is not enough to back the, the ger gerrymandering objection. And this is for two reasons that just have to do with gerrymandered kinds. They're not portable and they're not explanatorily valuable. And these matter because one of the features of gerrymandered kinds is, I mean, if you know where the term comes from, it comes from political gerrymandering. What do we do when we gerrymander? We kind of try to herd all our political opponents into one district, 
right? So it has just that one, it, it does the one thing. We make it up and it does that one thing and nothing else. But of course we can also gerrymandered properties that are like that. And these gerrymandered properties, uh, they're not like phlogiston, they are real, they're in the world, like uh, participants of the sort of conference on ethnicity and race and medicine, but, and they expert and they do something, right? You know, it's like, oh, there's a lot of philosophers in this, uh, this property is very explanatory in that way, but it's not very portable. There's not much else you're gonna get out of a gerrymandered property. It's supposed to be a problem with them. And then also then distinguishing, which I do between whether you can make accurate explanatory claims I'm just here using the plug in whatever causal notion of explanation you have with gerrymandered properties. You can, right? Um, it does, you know, we can explain things with the solo B property, uh, but it's just not going to be a very good explanation, right? So then these two screens, then selection principles, are what we use to eliminate certain properties or kinds from being scientifically elite or from being the kind of nationalness we want. And the minimalist commitments are what engender these properties. So the, our ability to generate gerrymandered kinds and properties that are nonetheless explanatory accurate is a major impetus for this. Hodor's famous one is, you know, being transported to within 15 miles of the Eiffel Tower, right? So, you know, it's kind of a very gerrymandered property um, or, or kind of, even in this terms. That you can do, you know, it's like, oh, everybody talks French around this property. This property is, a, you know, it's like everything is dominated in yours. There's things you can do with it, but it's just a very, um, uh, the, the other kinds of properties are just going to be far more explanatory. They're going to be natural. So then how are these races gerrymandered? Well, it's not sufficient. I want to say that racial entities or kinds or properties are biological and plaus plausibly explained by biological theory to establish their genuineness. You know, you give me five minutes, I will gerrymander many other things that I can do this. Uh, gerrymander kinds can do some at world. They can be explained somewhat. Um, uh, uh, and, uh, you know, I can just go into the Rosenberg paper, find a cluster um, and do that. Um, so, but then what is the kind of screen that we want? The screen that we want is uh, explanatory value. So the fact that it's metaphysically possible that these uh, uh, biological races uh, can be explanatory doesn't preclude this. Because again, depending on what notion of metaphysical possibility we're using, but most of the ones we have, it's possible, it's metaphysically possible for gerrymandered kinds to play an explanatory role in science, right? The screen is we don't want them to because it turns out that uh, 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 they're, uh, they're gerrymandered. And that screen is largely going to have to do with explanatory value, things like portability, proportionality, specificity, et cetera. So in biology, at least, Woodward discusses three dimensions of explanatory value in the biological world. I take seriously that it, it's not the case that biological races are just scientific kinds or what are their biological kinds. Okay, so let's take explanatory value in biology. Seriously, what do we, what kinds of explanatory value do we value in biology? Well, I take the stability, right? Specificity and proportionality are among them. I won't spend too much time going in, into in details with these, but, uh, but the thought is, uh, you know, stable explanations are ones that are invariant, for instance, across many different types of changes. A specificity is about how much, in this case, the cause uh, uh, modally matches the effect, right? So in fact, the word is also just what we use for enzyme action. There are just specific enzymes for specific activities, the kind of explanatory value. And proportionality, Woodward has a notion, many others have a notion, for instance, Diablo, has a notion of proportionality, and the view is how much information does the explanans give you about the explanandum? So the kind of like classic example is uh, uh, a lab trains birds to peck magenta flags. Okay, somebody observes this and says, the bird is pecking it, the flag because it's red. Okay, this is meant to be either fail as an explanation or be a bad explanation because 
well, it's not really proportional. The, the, the bird would not peck any other uh, shade of red. It only pecks magenta uh, flags, right? So uh, I, I, I take proportionality to be a dimension of explanatory value and not of accuracy. I'm very abundantist about, you know, yes, it, it, the bird is pecking. That's true. That explains it's explanatory, but it's not as good an explanation as the explanation that the bird's going to be magenta. Okay, so then these are the kinds of dimensions of value. And the problem with these minimalist or MB races uh, is that they're at an inappropriate grain to secure these dimensions that we want. Just like really the problem with the Sowerby property is it's just a, I mean, it's a bizarre grain uh, to be able to explain lots of things we would want in, I don't know, social science or whatever. So, for there to be explanatory value, we actually have to reverse the Spencerian uh, order, right? It's um, uh, it's because they would be exp these exp have the explanatory value that it should ought to be metaphysically possible uh, that they play this role, or in the in, in the sense of metaphysically possible that I think matters. So what we would want to see is, you know, do these biological races do they provide specific, robust, proportional explanatory relations, um, um, and um, I want to, I mean, the argue is a hard word. I'm going to say, yeah, I don't think so, right? I mean, this is the kind of thing we've been talking about before, too, is you can always pick um, uh, different grains and they'll be good. Uh, of course, the minimal, this is not a problem for the minimalist assets because the thought is supposed to be, I mean, that's fine, right? Uh, uh, but I'm kind of smuggling, uh, bringing in this notion that, no, we actually have to take very seriously worries about uh, about gerrymandering. So there's no specific explanatory relations, or there are very few specific explanatory relations between these biological races and these other properties. So race and medicine, let me just rush through, is the kind of claimed, you know, I mean, you know, the thought is, well, maybe this is going to be useful. This is the kind of thing, once we have these minimalist races or these races or these biological races, scientists can then investigate, are there actually empirical things that they do? Well, and, and oftentimes sickle cell disease and lactase particular disease are kind of uh, kinds of examples of where race might be uh, may be useful, or at least in my case. Then the question is: Is this are these places where race is explanatory? I want to say, well, uh, not not in the kind of proportional sense. So very quickly, I mean, you will probably be over uh, aware of this. We know the kinds of two main uh, essentially explanations of how sickle cell disease matters uh, 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 or sickle cell disease uh, comes to proliferate in the society. One is the just mechanistic explanation of how having sickle cell trait protects your red blood cells from plasmodium. Uh, and then facts about how being heterozygous for sickle cell disease um, without uh, uh, does confer that protection or allows that to persist in a population uh, without uh, the, the extremely deleterious health effects. And then we just have the historical facts about, for instance, in the United States, where do uh, where does the, the largest share of African Americans come from, and so on. But and uh, uh, although of course it's particularly associated with Sub-Saharan Africa. It's a trait that emerges and sometimes disappears in many different populations around the world, right? But it's singularly uh, 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 racialized because of because of the the U.S. context. Lactase persistence again uh, is the ability to digest lactose in water, which is strange, by the way. It's very strange that we can uh, digest lactose in. Um, adulthood. Um, and, you know, this is one of those things where like most of the models are going to be about how um, uh, domesticating animals and then, uh, and the selection pressure is just apparently, everybody's just lactose persistent. It's just during times of famine, uh, uh, the lactose intolerant dial, which is like a very, very interesting that this is the kind of proposed mechanism of how you get lactase persistence, you know, uh, we're always drinking milk, even when it's bad for us, but then in a famine, the, 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 those without lactose persistence die out. Um, um, uh, so then again, so what are the kinds of variations that matter? It's just kind of variations in um, in pastoral practice. Obviously, this is a, a, a gene that, again, is not as frequent in all continental populations, but does emerge. Sometimes it appears, sometimes fixes. 
So what is the, I mean, I just picked two traits, but generally, you know, selection is just very slow and humans are like the babies of species, you know, we would not be allowed to join if, this, if we were up in the club, you know, it's like 200,000, 300,000 years old. So unsurprisingly, there's just not very many traits. I mean, this is a very famous study by Matthew Semerol on uh, comparing ancient DNA samples from contemporary and then finding only about a dozen or so sites with um, uh, a selection detection model, right? So, you know, it's really very few. We, we've only we've we've been away, we've been away from the homeland, from Africa, not long enough. You know, not long enough. So, so what is so what is the thought? Jeez, I mean, are there any thoughts here? So, scientific sure. uh, scientific fields are interested in investigate kinds. I think that are maximally mutually explanatory. We are we ought to worry as the high church metaphysicians worry about who gets to be scientifically elite. Uh, and we know what kinds of things they are, charge, spin, field, et cetera, in physics, uh, neuron, neurotransmitters, synapse in, in neuroscience. Uh, these things are well formed because they are ro robustly mutually explanatory. They give us the best package, okay, of of uh, what the properties are, the natural properties are uh, in those sciences. Uh, and it, you know, it can also be in social science. It can be you know, price, inflation, et cetera. And so maybe it is economics a science. I will not, I will not open that can of worms. Uh, minimalist races lack these valuable expansion traditions. Or at least as the theory is kind of built out, they don't have to have them to have been counted as biologically real. But then the worry is, but isn't that just what a dairyminder kind is? So they're therefore not scientifically elite. Am I doing that? Well, it's, well, it's too late now. Uh, the, 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 so the, in conclusion, uh, the factors that are supposed to secure the genuine biological kindness of minimalist races, adaptiveness, genetics, these are things that you can, there are many different kinds of ways we can group people where this will be true. They're gonna be applicable to like different grains, right? I mean, that's, that's the point. It if for biological reasons to be real, they ought to have been captured in a robust way by, by the proposed biological races. Uh, genetic distinctness, whatever that turns out to be in, in creatures like us, um, you know, is possible for other kinds of populations, right? Um, so that's not really enough to, to give it an oomph, right? Really, these, these minimalist biological races um, you know, they're not, they're not escaping the gerrymandering charges here. Um, if they figured in robust explanations, if they figured in specific explanations, proportional explanations, or if it seemed like they are likely to because of our understanding of evolutionary history of humans, then we could be like, there are many different types of races. At least one of these are is biological. But otherwise we have to kind of withhold judgment because we're worried that being the kinds of creative philosophical beings that we are, we can always gerrymander, but we can always gerrymander. So then in this sen sense, then they, these races seem like they're explanatory orphans, right? They maybe explain a couple of things or three or four things and are explained in turn by them, that that's kind of what a gerrymandered kind is, right? It's an orphan. Uh, so they ought not to get the gold star or even the silver star, right? I have a graded notion of naturalness. They're kind of, you know, they're more natural, biological races in this sense are more natural than pathological kinds. They're more natural than random group, like the solar bee group. Uh, but I don't think they're as, they're natural enough, right, to, to, to get these kinds of scientifically elite status of, of being able to, to be used in science. Thank you. There should have been a... Yeah, thanks very much. Um, so, I mean, your argument may go through nonetheless, because I'm now going to move away from biomedicine, right? So uh -huh. your argument may go through from bi bi biomedicine. But I nonetheless wonder whether you don't place the bar too high by referring to all these wonderful physical things. Right. Because <laughs> you know, after all, if we're talking about anything here, we're talking about biology. Right, yes. And mm -hmm. biology... And you know, all the stuff on the species concepts. Yeah, there's going to be like various kinds of grain. It's not clear that evolutionary clades have like 
huge explanatory uh, potential over and above the, uh, you know, the further branches, the species. And, you know, we can kind of go back and forth with these levels of brains. That's not, not to say that they're not, I would say, fairly useful and respect is silver star, right? right. Scientific classifications. Okay. And so if you, if you take that perspective, isn't it possible that, I don't know if I want to call them racist, but, you know, various kinds of human population groupings that plausibly roll out of this kind of genetic research that are inter, uh, you know, that can interlink with knowledge about human population movements, archaeogenetics, that these are respectable silver star enterprises, you know, that do do deserve a role in a realist scientific classifications. Um, and they may well admit of multiple levels of grain because, you know, lots, lots of things in life, especially biology, do. Like I said, I think that probably won't get you anything useful for biomedicine, but it might you get you a whole lot of use. Uh, well, I don't know about immunology, though. I think, I mean, immunology, I'm not really sure whether you claim about um, there no being no sites for significant selections don't go through there. But it might not give you all that much for biomedicine, but it might still give you a kind of respectable silver star scientific status with respect to a whole bunch of domains of scientific uh, inquiry, including like historical, archaeological, etc. Good. So I think uh, that's a great question. And I think you're right with the dialectic, right? So yes, absolutely. What the best package is, is going to be... Um, uh, is going to depend on the science, right? So it's the physics, the how nice that, the, you know, it's not going to be that. Uh, the, the physics doesn't set the bar. It has to be uh, set by the... So then the question is, how do you get gold, silver, bronze, the metal for each science? And then uh, where does biological race? So then my th thought is, I start with the worry. This looks a little bit gerrymandered. And so far as it goes for biological properties, right? Is this, 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 it looks gerrymandered in a way, for instance, that neuron or whatever, that's, that's my kind of gold uh, star. Uh, and so how do we adjudicate this, right? So how do we adjudicate, is it silver, is it bronze, or is it... So it would be um, part of the best package if, you know, uh, these races as the structured subdivision of the human groups, um, I think hit upon things that didn't seem like it was part of what characterized them, right? So for instance, the kind of hardemonian, uh, you know, skin color is plausibly biological and ratiation is... So then that, that, that I think is in the kind of gerrymandered, very closely in the gerrymandered universe precisely because, but that's but that's why these things turned out to be a conception of race that could be biological as we started with these kinds of death. Just like, for instance, we, could, we wouldn't say there are the talls and then there are the shorts and then these things are plausibly biological because it's mostly genetic, whether you're tallish or something like that. Um, for the kind of Sp Spencer kind of OMB race theory as biological races, um, yeah, I, I, I just am very skeptical that, I mean, archaeogenetics, um, sure, there are going to be a few things with these kinds of notions, especially graded notions, which involve counting, <laughs> you know, it's like, you count it to three, that's, that's silver star for me, you count it to seven, but um, is it, so one thing that a, a, a geneticist, uh, I, I read a lot on this, Gusev, uh, kind of points out is one of the biggest problems with the biological race is it shifts us into out of thinking of people as they actually are, which is you're really looking at a nested model, right? So there's just something about race where you're not thinking of it as a kind of nested thing, but a kind of like, you know, this, this beautiful diagram of multiple circles that sometimes overlap or something like that. Um, so I think it doesn't have that energy to go as part of the best package, because once we start with, you know, people, the human species, extremely young, 
um, uh, lived 70% of its history in one geographic location um, and doesn't show evidence of uh, 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 very large selection sweeps uh, after it you know, begins to move around, although it does you know, skin color. Immunology is one of the things, actually, there are like a couple of the genes that uh, they identify uh, are immunological ones in the Matheson study. Um, yeah, so if this is what it looks like, is our biological race is gonna be part of the, be the best package? I'm gonna say no. So they're gonna be fourth almost bronze, right? But it is gonna be maybe useful in archaeo in archaeogenetics and all kinds of uh, in all kinds of ways. But this isn't the picture that you would expect to see for the thing that's meant to be describing as part of the best package, the structured subdivision of the human species. Sorry, that was a long winded. I'll keep it short <laughs> from known. <laughs> yeah. I just think the kind of the comparison with something like a neuron is just unfair right to neuron or to race no to of race of the, they uh, aim to be like a neuron so you know you have you have various you have, you have different kinds of biological kind, kinds kind, kind of yeah yeah right, and right. you know so so like a a neuron is like kind of a discrete entity of a of, of a body now uh -huh. also it's a what do we call it a homologue we find version of it a lot across lots of different kind of clades just like hearts you know things are hearts even though my heart and a fish heart look quite different so but biologists recognize like loads of different kinds of kinds and if something like race or species is anything it's a it's a population uh kind right some people say it's not a kind at all it's an individual uh, um, right, it's just not right to think of these things as 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 um, as kinds. And you know, what our species now will look different from a current perspective, from what they are from a different perspective, because they they're individuals that extend in time and they change over time. Mm -hmm. And so, it seems like some of the things you'd expect, you know, you kind of hold as a charge against race are ones that you could hold as a charge to any kind of population uh, level. St of that kind, right? Of a uh -huh. candidate individual uh -huh. population level. And then, you know, the rest, that, that, that just seems, that bit of it just seems to be setting the bar too high and slightly wrong. I mean, it might still, you know, some of the things you say might still go through. But even some of the terminologies, like the human species, as I understand, people kind of, I mean, well, actually, you know, the Neanderthals, they were part of the human species and the Denisovans. And those are just... The the based on like how many archaeological finds, what about all right. the archaeological finds we haven't found? There might be numerous subdivisions, and yet we say useful things about you know all sorts of movements, interbreeding, what you might find in people from what kind of interbreeding patterns, like sig in genetic signatures of interbreed. Right. So you know, I, 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 it looks to me like a respectable science yeah. like enterprise that can't work without making claims about populations. Okay, yes, so I will 100% species is gonna be part of the package. It, the species is gonna be the gold star. Population, I mean, the very concept of a population, uh, concept of a breeding population, um, so potentially clades, these are all, so then the question is, is biological race one of these for humans? Right. So because, of course, you might start from the top line. Race is just subspecies and go from there. But then, of course, that wouldn't be very close to. I mean, it, it breaks the kind of condition that both Hardeman and Spencer have. Well, it's one of our race conceptions that's supposed to be biological. Uh, so if you just started with like Kitcher does, you know, just like okay, all I mean is what all biologists mean when they talk about race is just their subspecies concept or their subspecies. It may not look different. There might be a thousand of them, but this is, uh, 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 and so on. So in, that might be part of the best package. So the question is, is one of our conception, I mean, the question is, is the Office of Management and Budgets, the Hardeman's specific list of the minimalist race, is, are those part of the package? And I'm saying, well, they're going to have to, you know, sing, you know, sing for their supper. And there's reason to think that they might not, even though population, species, subspecies, or even race, mace might be part of the best package. Hi, um, that was great. I have kind of two worries. One I can say quickly, okay. and one which will take a bit longer. So the first one is just the the structure of the argument, uh -huh. right? So we're we're kind of saying let's just accept this K five 
yes. thing. I love conceding. And then say, it's gerrymandered because it looks like this without actually saying how it got gerrymandered. Uh -huh. So we're just supposed to accept that it's gerrymandered because it has certain properties of gerrymandered things. Yes. Now, apropos like high church metaphysics, like let's go to church, Okay. <laughs> right? So imagine there's like a fire alarm and we all have to file out onto the quad. Right. And then there's a, and then an alien lands uh -huh. and looks at these various groupings of people on the quad. Right. Now there'll be a grouping of people, of these people, which have all of these properties. Um, and then let's say there's another group, which is you know, some kid has a birthday party and he's with his family. Mm -hmm. Now, both of those groups are to some extent, you know, explicable by some kind of process that got them there. Mm -hmm. But I take it that the Sowerby group has properties which are fully explained right. by the fact that we're all here for a conference. Right. The family has properties which are not fully explained by the fact that they are a family, uh -huh. right? Or maybe they are. So the question is, you know, why are we gerrymandered, but they are not? Like, like let's say that everything about that family, their race, their genes, uh -huh. their genetic disposition to diabetes is all fully explained by the fact that they're all related, they have a historical right. relationship. But we would think that this is not gerry, this is gerrymandered and that's not. Are they both gerrymandered? Right, right. so, uh, okay, so let me answer. Yeah, so there's, so two things. One is I also elided like really important distinctions in the literature on naturalness. So one is, that maybe the kinds of naturalness that matters is going to be it's going to be an int an internal relation an intrinsic so Boyd's hyper uh, homeostatic property cluster view it's like it's something about what's going on inside is it's stabilized by some internal mechanism that's what makes it natural I'm giving an extrinsic notion that's principally what makes it high church metaphysics because that's also what David Lewis and all of the Lewisians will do is. It's facts about really what kind of what facts about the property rather than like this internal relation. So yes, so the family is gerrymandered from the point of view of biological science. I mean that specific family, right? It's just like this is not. It's not going to be in the in the if the aliens are like have a godlike intellect and they're writing a biology book, a physics book, a chemistry book. That family is not going to be in the biology book, right? My claim is like species, population, breeding population, that will be in that book. It's just that these are, these are fine. These are, they have a special science naturalness to them. They get like gold to bronze and then they get to be in there, but that family's not. So it is possible that they're both uh, German. But you are right to point out that, you know, there's a difference question of, is there like some internal, like stabilizing mechanism? We're part of a social process called conference. Right, so that kind of like a, we're like a Boydian kind in that sense, uh, uh, and they are also stabilized by that. They are members of a family or something like that. Yeah, but it, it, but the point is that that seems more natural, right? This is like who would say that this is a natural grouping, so, whereas some people might say, but that is a natural, like there's some kind of natural biological mechanism that pulls mm -hmm. them together. Right. So it's 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 just going to be, you know natural sometimes i like genuine better for this reason you know as relates to what right some so i mean if you come from really high church metaphysics of the variety like all properties that are not the fundamental physical properties are gerrymandered there's the cell neuron that's just, come on you know what I mean? they're made up of the the perfectly natural properties those things aren't only the only those only things that are natural in the world are the fundamental physical properties. Uh, some people are laughing. I mean, I don't. I don't I, so there, are, you can hold that view, right? There are only there's only the fundamental. Everything else is just like our brains are so small. We make pragmatic kinds or or whatever. So I'm in fact much more broad church in that sense. I say no. There are going to be there's going to be naturalness at different levels, um, and then it's just going to depend on. What are the kinds of important 
organizing theories of that science. What is what are what is going to be net? You know, you need species. Like you just need species to do evolutionary theory. You need population. You need breeding population. So then, th those are the kinds of things that that will. Speak to it, it turns on. It's like, uh, well, maybe not. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Yeah, there we yeah. go. Okay, fine. Cool. Um, thanks. I really like this. And I really like the gradations of naturalness. I think that's exactly the right way to do metaphysics. The reason I was sniggering is because uh, there are, I mean, you know, if you have this really high church metaphysics, there are no kinds that we're currently aware of because right. every, all, all fundamental physics is emergent from some right, as the right, atmosphere right, right. theory. So, 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 yeah. So, so, that's so, Anglo-Catholic <laughs> metaphysics. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have a slightly inchoate question that's trying to get you to say a bit more about the kinds of explanations you think are kind of a, a kind making or legitimizing, mm, good. right? Yeah. And so, um, say it's a case, imagine a fictional world in which um, uh, society collectively picks up on the fact that people have different colored skins and then they enact all sorts of kind of juridical mechanisms in order to discriminate against such people. And as a long term consequence of that, there are significant statistical health differences that are biomedically manifest in all sorts of ways amongst those kinds of individuals. But the, pit, the, the, the feature of such individuals that's being picked up on by such mechanisms that then leads to these kind of long term observational statistically robust differences is a biological feature. It is a feature that can be picked out in genetic terms, it can be picked out in phenotypic terms. Now it seems to me like that feature is then playing a really significant role in a whole class of broadly categorized biomedical explanations or biological explanations if you want to think about biological in a certain slightly expansive sense. And it seems to me that you still want to say that those coins then count as gerrymandered with respect to biology, or you're trying to say, no, no, it's just that what goes on in fact in our real world is that the feature that's picked up picked up on these by these kind of kind of racial, racially prejudicial mechanisms is not exactly the same one as the one that's picked up on genetics. And then you might worry about the mismatch being, you know, good enough that the kinds are relevantly natural, that they kind of can get some kind of metal, whether okay. or not, yeah. Good, that's a, that's a great question. Um, so I would say, yes, there is for the given signs, uh, like I just basically kind of take like this Ted Sider type view that um, they are going to be the fundamental kind of like organizing theories. So I am privileging evolutionary biology in this case, and I am privileging genetics in this case. But all the things you mentioned, I mean, so I, you, uh, it, it's possible that the pluralism works in this way. You might say, look, voices are socially real because people, all of the mechanisms that you mentioned. And this social real thing does, exp so it's indispensable to explain. There's like now an emerging debate on whether race is indispensable in social science. Say it's true, say it's true that race is indispensable in social science, then that means it's part of the best package for economics or sociology or, uh, or anthropology or whatever. So then social races then in that case have the, the they, they, they meddle in the naturalness league, you get gold, silver, and so then they're necessary for us to explain why some people have asthma and some people don't, or why some people, and so on and so forth. But those are not the biological races, right? Because in biology, um, you know, you better be doing, you better be playing in the, in the genetic leagues or in the um, evolutionary biology leagues, um, um, yeah. If, if, if I believe that the biological races were subspecies, it would be, um, then I think they would, it would go, but I don't think they are subspecies. I don't even think it's part of the minimalist race view that they're subspecies. Uh, but any kind of like weaker notion is just gonna be much better dealt with with kind of like populational notions. 
that that'll vary depending on context. And you hold that to be true, even if it's the case that the social races you just identified happen to match really, really well with the kind of the sort of, you know, base metal biological yeah, I mean, it's, we are so phenotypically plastic, right? I mean, you can get so much biology just from um, different environmental exposures, right? You can you can do a lot um, with. I mean, people will just they'll do they'll they'll have different heights. They'll have different diseases like asthma or whatever. They'll have better or worse eyesight and things like that. So like, since so much depends on these social determinants, it's possible. But then are these categories then biological? No, they're ex these are part of the social explanations, right? Those children have asthma because they, are, they live under the overpass. And they live under the overpass having entirely to do with uh, facts about social properties, right? They live under the overpass because of kind of like things that happened in history. This is not because of biological things. If they hadn't lived in the overpass, so you, you see, then they wouldn't have asthma or whatever. Uh, so sorry, actually, this is a comment. Okay, good. So, so I mean, so I'm starting with, uh, so it's not necessarily just OMB. So Hardiman has his own list, which is just, he just names the, the, the K5 clusters and, and indeed, and whether OMB voice theory, I don't want to describe other people's views and print, but, but the point is supposed to be, look, it's not that there is the one theory of race and then that is biological. So there's like a million maybe race theories. Is there one that is biological race? The reason to have thought that OMB race theory is a biological race is it is supposed to be the, that. It, so I'm not making the claim. And then geneticists say that it is useful. Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah but that's it. That's led. So, you know. Uh, the terminology is not going to be, it's fine. Whatever, the OMB races are called races, right? And they the, they correspond to the, the cluster, the 1990s, and it also just doesn't matter. I mean, it's just a coincidence, maybe, that the Office of Management of Budget got it right, maybe it's something else. But, um, so then the question is, are those biological races? I'm, I, the dialectic would be too confused. You can make the argument that you're making that 
they just aren't identical, or you can make the argument that they do. So for instance, Eric Weinsberg makes this argument. But I'm just, let's accept that the OMB races are biological races in this sense, right? In this minimalist sense. Are they biologically genuine? Are they biologically real? So then, but scientists are so, scientists are so, they don't think very hard about things. <laughs> so it's a, it definitely is, a, you can, as philosophers, be like, look, I mean, it's possible that all these geneticists just, I mean, it's, I don't want to say it because obviously what you say agrees with what I'm saying, but, say, but I want to be charitable to the view and say, look, I mean, it's, it's an open question, right? Maybe it could have been useful, right? So it, it, it's, it, the fact that it's not useful doesn't mean that it's not biological race. I'm trying to resist that. I would say, well, it actually turns out that it's not explanatorily connected in the ways that gold or silver or whatever start, then it should, we shouldn't say it's, it's real yeah. in this metaphysically uh, genuine or real in this metaphysically gold story or silver story or bronze story way. <laughs>